Hello everyone, it's James from Keeping It Anime, and today we'll be going over episode 99 of Yu-Gi-Oh! Brains. And this episode was surprisingly good, if I'm perfectly honest with you. I wasn't looking forward to the whole Bowman and Playmaker rematch, and I thought after last week, they couldn't get any more um, wackier or crazier or sillier with their sort of duels. But this episode actually took it a step beyond. So we're actually in a city centre, uh, the centre of Link Brains, doing the duel between Playmaker and Bowman. And Bowman's going first, and he's Link spamming. He's Link spamming all these monsters and gets um, five Link 1 monsters that are all different attributes. Now, before we go into the big thing that he does, we get to see Zizen. And Ghost Girl, Emma, they're both in the same place as we last saw them, and they're saying they have to do something. They've had too many casualties, and it's up to them to do something. They can't log anybody out, because there's a sword art situation, and no one can log out. So Zizen says he must shut down Vrains' system. However, this could actually cause permanent mental damage to some of the people that are being forcefully logged out. But Zizen's like, okay, fine, we have to do this. Now, we also see a weird greenish blue sphere above the um, above Bowman and above Link Vrains, and all these weird kind of light beams are coming out, and they start to attack people that are there. So they start going through their head. So that's kind of weird, but I'll touch upon that in a minute. So, before the duel with Bowman actually starts, we actually hear he's got a new deck. And we're already Link spams earlier on. I'm a little bit disappointed. Because we see a couple of new cards. But, to start with, we just see his old cards, and I'm like, okay, cool. Bowman's got a new deck, because he's got all the Ignises. Brilliant. And then it turns out that he's using the same old, same old. Just with one or two added. I thought that was a little bit underwhelming, but then the big thing happens. I and Bowman are having a conversation and I says that, you know, Link 5s are impossible. Having a monster with all attributes are impossible. Because obviously Bowman's whole thing is to get two monsters out with different attributes, Link summon into something that has the effect to give them the attribute. And since he's got all five attributes that he has acquired so far in the series, He's allowed um, to Link Summon, but he basically says that he can do the impossible because he's Bowman. And we see this light that's been attacking people take into effect because these people that have been attacked by this weird light just suddenly fall. They suddenly fall to the ground and they're unconscious. They're basically dead at this point. And... Um, Bowman has a new skill, which is uh, which is created because of these people sort of falling like flies, and this skill is called um, Master Storm Access, and he can basically add one random, but we all know Storm Access isn't random. They just like to say the word random. Cybers card to his deck once per turn. Now, this doesn't really state whether or not it's his turn he can do it, or if it's everybody's turn. So if Playmaker's having a go, he can do it during Playmaker's turn, and basically add Mirror Force to his hand or something. I don't know. If that's the case, it's going to be pretty stupid. So Bowman gets a new card randomly added. I'm doing quotation marks there, I know you can't see it. But it gets... One random card added to his hand. And, um, yeah. It turns out it's a Link 5 card. And this Link 5 card can have all five attributes. And this card kind of reminded me of a, um, another card that was in Dual Monsters. Like, you know how we had Lightning cheating last time? is was kind of an homage to the original Yu-Gi-Oh! back in Dawless Kingdom. Well, if you remember, in Duelist Kingdom, 
they had this weird kind of mini arc type of episode where they all kind of dressed up as their monsters. Not the one, not the one with Bakora, but the one where they went into this weird sort of like monster dungeon realm type of thing. And there was that five headed dragon with different heads. This card definitely felt like that. The card is actually up on screen now and um, obviously you'll be able to see it. But that's just a fusion card that it reminded me of. I don't know, it was pretty cool, and if it is an homage to that, then that's pretty decent. But this new Link 5 monster, with the 5 attributes, is called... Um, Chimera Hydra Drive Dragged. Uh, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. The last word is spelled D-R-A-G-R-I-D. It's got 400 attack points, and... Yeah, it seems pretty strong. It's probably going to have all these broken skills like the rest of his cards do. Maybe it stops the effects. But, you know, maybe that might mean the whole co-talker things are out of the question. But hey, we've seen that with Bowman and Playmaker of Doors before. So, you know, nothing new. Now, we also get told by Bowman that he has a thing called um, Neuron Link. A neural link is a system that Bowman has created in which he can pull out and use human brain's capabilities. So that's what I was talking about with the whole light situation. When the light went through the head of the um, people trapped in brains and they suddenly dropped, that is Bowman collecting their capability and their sort of resources to create his data storms because he says that his data storm was created by thousands of people being sacrificed. And what makes this scene, and but the thing that Bowman does really interesting for me, is that the Knights of Hanoi are actually looking quite disgusted at the fact that Bowman is doing this. Like, we've seen how low the Knights of Hanoi have gone um, in the past. You know, they had the whole ghost incident where, I think, Vira, she put everyone into a coma. Um, Faust was kind of a jerk. And, yeah, obviously they had the whole lost incident type of thing. But, actually no, that was Kagami. My bad. But yeah, the Knights of Hanoi have terrorised and done lots of horrible things. But even they are disgusted at what Bowman is doing. And that kind of shows just how much impact Bowman is having as a villain on these people in the show. Which is pretty good, I'm not going to lie. But for me, Bowman isn't really a villain. I just... When comparing Bowman's sort of villainous vibe to Lightning's, it's not even a contest for me. Anyway, so I actually called Bowman out for being like Lightning. He says that, um, you know, the thing that Bowman is doing with the whole using people from brains to power up his data storms and helping him win, it's the same thing that Lightning did with Jin when he used him as a hostage in the last couple of episodes with Revolver. But Bowman's like, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know. I'm doing it differently, you know. I'm not stopping a fight from happening. Everyone will one day become one with me, so I might as well make it now. I'm, I'm different than Lightning. You know, he's playing that sort of card. The technicality type. And, um, well, you know, I kind of can't argue with that. But at the same time, it seems like a loophole that's very convenient. But maybe they'll elaborate on in a couple of episodes time, because this is a three episode duel, from what I understand. And considering this episode only stretched to uh, Bowman's turn and one turn of Playmaker, or half a turn of Playmaker, then, you know, it's understandable. But we go to Playmaker's turn and not even Quantum Dragon, the Synchro Monster that Yusaku has, that has the ability to send one monster back to your opponent's hand, can stop this Link 5 monster. Because just as the episode ends, Bowman uses another skill. What this skill is, we don't know. But, you know, it's obviously going to be something pretty good. Um, otherwise, he wouldn't use it. And it, you can guarantee that it's going to affect a lot more people in Brains, because more people, since he first took a few people out, have been affected by this light. Okay, so I will say I've not watched the preview 
for next week because I actually want to try and stay for the most part spoiler free. So I'm not actually going to be watching this ne next episode preview because one thing about this episode that kind of made me enjoy it a bit more was the fact I didn't actually know what to expect. Like I knew what duel was happening because obviously we're down to the final two. But Bowman actually surprised me quite a bit and I want to be kept um, being surprised in the couple of episodes to come because it would make this duel that I'm not looking forward to that much more enjoyable if I know or if I don't know that something big is coming and I see it while watching. But overall guys this episode was actually like I said surprisingly good. The animation was good. I love the fact that they have the facial features on Bowman. They tried to make him look more villainous but at the same time like I said earlier I can't see Bowman as a villain. I just can't. Um, they gave us quite a lot of dialogue and I like the kind of feeling that I get or the vibe that I get from Zizen where he's like okay at this point it doesn't matter what I do now I have to do something regardless of the actions. And this leads me on to my prediction for season 3 which I'll get to in just a second. So yeah overall um, this episode actually deserves a 7 for me. It was pretty solid and it flowed quite nicely. There was quite a lot of dialogue and lots of interesting details added. Um, but it wasn't too much from what I could see. The only things that let it down were the kind of BS type of um, stuff with Storm Access and the whole Bowman being super duper overpowered and then trying to push him as a villain. Which clearly isn't working in my personal opinion. And one last thing I want to mention is the screams. When Yusaku is facing Bowman and Bowman uses his skills, we hear screams. It's very light, but very um, but you can just about pick it up. The people in Vrains that are being attacked are screaming. And the facial expressions and the reaction from um, Yusaku and I are just glorious. I love it. It's great. So yeah, predictions for Season 3. So, we see a lot of things happening in this arc, and lots of things could be negatively effective. Now, it probably will happen at some point that these people that have been affected by Bowman will somehow come back to life. But let's just take that out of the equation for a minute, uh, the equation, sorry, and think about whether or not they will come back to life. And if they don't, imagine if Season 3 is the fallout of Soltech. Soul Technology is the company that supposedly manages and created Link Vrains. A system, a place where loads of people want to go to and have wanted to go to and um, enjoy, interact with other people. But thanks to these AIs, thanks to Lightning, thanks to Bowman, thanks to Windy, Link Vrains is now a battleground. People were too scared in Season 3 to go back into Link Vrains because they don't want to die like people have. This will, in the world of Vrains and Yu-Gi-Oh, this will be a big catastrophic event that was bigger than the Tower of Hanoi. You know, yes, the Tower of Hanoi almost took out the internet, but what Bowman's doing is killing people online. Again, sword art style, but it's still quite massive. And if, say, for example, a company like Apple or, you know, a big tech company did something like this, no one would use their product again for fear out their safety. So maybe season three might be like a, a redemption arc for Soltech. They're trying to do something. Or maybe this happens. Maybe the people that get attacked by Bowman are safe, but then the people that Zyzen saves by forcing them to log out aren't safe and they're mentally damaged. So maybe that then becomes not a Bowman problem, but a Soltech problem because an executive of Soltech put people at risk. And people won't like that. They won't trust that company again. They could fire Zizen, but that's not going to save people from not going back into Vrains. So maybe we do have Soltechnology coming in and kind of 
showing their dominance a bit more, showing that they are capable. Much like when we had, in the beginning of the series, we had that really goofy character, I can't remember his name, but he created all of those pr battle program simulated AIs that could defend Reigns, or Soltek. But imagine that on a bigger scale. Something like that, to try and make Soul Technology have their trust restored within them by the public. I don't know, that's something I thought would be a cool idea for Season 3. If you have any good ideas for Season 3, or what you want to see in the third series of this uh, show of Reigns, then let me know in the comment section down below. But overall guys, I actually pretty enjoyed this episode. I'm looking forward to the next ones, and um, that's going to do it for this review. I hope you've all enjoyed. If you have, smash that like button, subscribe if you're new, if you, so you never miss a video from me, and uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. But until next time guys, keep it anime, and have a good day. Bye.